let me try to establish a high-level framework for thinking about what we're going to learn about together this week. Now, everyone in this course is either pursuing a graduate degree in education or has a graduate degree in education, so I'm going to assume that we could all agree at a high level about what it means to learn. But what does it mean for a machine to learn? In the same way that humans employ a variety of strategies for learning, including reading, highlighting and rereading, studying flashcards, taking practice quizzes, etc., there are a large number of techniques that have been invented to help machines learn. And as is the case with human study techniques, where some of them have proven to be more effective and others have proven to be less effective, I'm looking at you rereading and highlighting, some machine learning techniques have proven to be more effective than others. And the most effective machine learning techniques today can be summarized, again at a very high level, as different ways of learning from examples and refining that learning through practice. For example, after you read a chapter in a textbook for the first time, you might review by working through a set of flashcards and placing the cards in different piles according to whether you're able to answer them correctly or not. And then you might focus another round of study on those cards that you were unable to answer correctly the first time, sorting them into additional piles. And then you might take additional rounds of study or review for those topics that you struggled with the most that time. And you might keep working this way until you either run out of time to study or you're satisfied with your level of performance. Now I want you to keep this mental model of how humans learn in mind as you study the way that machines learn using neural networks. And here we'll pause to make our first connection between artificial intelligence and instructional design. As instructional designers, you synthesize learning theories and pedagogical approaches and media in different formats and learning science research and other things in, in order to develop instructional processes or products that help students learn. At a high level, people who help machines learn are also instructional designers, but they're also much more. Before they can teach the machine, they have to design the brain that the machine will use to do its learning, remember what it learns, and later be able to apply what it's learned. And that's what a neural network is. It's a model that people have designed that can learn, remember, and apply its learning later on, together with a set of techniques for training the model. For the first part of this week's before class activity, we're gonna watch several videos about neural networks. Now I watched dozens and dozens, and I picked the best ones. But I wanna warn you that these videos are going to include some math. But you don't need to follow the math in detail to get a good high level grasp of the key concepts involved in neural networks. Let me repeat. Do not stress about the math. We are never going to talk about the math. The specifics of the math are irrelevant for our purposes in this class, okay? Use the questions that I pose before the videos as a guide to what to listen for and pay attention to. And at the end of the week, all I really want is for you to be able to answer those questions in your own words. Now please watch all of the videos as they'll give you different examples and different perspectives. Because a lot of what we're going to talk about this week is probably new to you, lots of examples and lots of perspectives will really help. And just in case you're hoping that we get to use ChatGPT right from the get-go, don't worry. That's the second part of this week's Before Class activity. And you can read more about it as well as the short pre-class survey at the bottom of the page.